Well, good morning everyone. Today we are at a Jeep, and it's a Jeep Cherokee 2004, and it's got this, oh, there we go, they call it the PowerTech Direct Injection CRD. So I think this is a 1.8 direct uh, diesel injection. So, <clears throat> there's a fuel filter up there. Never mind, don't know why I'm showing you that. <laughs> but uh, there we go, Cherokee. So, Customers complain, and it has been confirmed by Roddy, so that's good enough for me, that you're driving along the road and it just cuts out, cuts out and stalls. So I think the customers, they do a bit DIY themselves, and they had tried to scan it for codes, but nothing came up on their scan tool. So we've got a few codes. You can see we've got four in the powertrain control module. VTS the vehicle theft security we've got one fault and ABS we've got three and it scanned ten modules. Now what was I got to say? VTS, I'm sure they call it skim system in this thing. So we'll just go into right into the report. Uh, oh incidentally, you know how I've had problems in the past trying to communicate with these older Chryslers. So what I do now, I plug the USB connection into it and it goes right into this say uh, the what do you call it the diagnostic interface so that works it speeds up the process so there we go so here's the fault codes pcm has fault codes complaining about let me see fuel rail pressure malfunction pressure too high off oh, now that looks like bingo if the pressure is getting too high it will cut it it wants to avoid damage equally if the pressure gets too low it will cut it and the funny thing is, when Roddy was describing the symptoms on the phone and what the customer had described to them, it's almost like an electrical problem. But fuel pressure does that. When it reaches that level, it will just cut the whole system and you can swear it's electrical. But it's because it's common rail. It's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's just running out of diesel. It will cut. Anyway, so there we go. Skin system. That's a VTS, they called it. So we've got a P0340 cam position sensor circuit CMP CKP. Uh, I don't know what stratus, oh, I don't know what that means, failure. So that could be, the 340 could be the failure. But why is it showing it in the skim system, I don't know. Uh, but see if, I would think, see that failure there, see if you disconnect the camshaft sensor when the thing's running. I'm pretty sure they keep running. We'll, we'll go test that. And then we've got a P1151 battery sense line voltage too low. And then in the ABS, we've got left front sensor circuit failure, left front wheel speed sensor failure, and system under voltage. So just going back to this one in the skim, battery sense line, battery sense line one voltage too low. That could be something to do with it. So there's a few things there. So we'll come out of that. We'll go back into PCA. As you can see, horrifically long. So we've got a P1130, real pressure system malfunction, pressure too high. And the P0340 cam position sensor circuit and the P115 P1511 battery sense line voltage too low. Hmm. Oh, now I read it. The skim's complaining with this P1685. So there's a few we can go in here, but I think. Well, look at that. The P1130 became first. So you would go for that one, I would think. Let's see if we can get a fuel pressure in here, live data. Here we go, fuel pressure set point, actual fuel pressure 16,200, 16, 16,251 kilopascals. Mprompt, that's a, that's a delivery valve, that would control pressure. We'd imagine, well that's delivery rate, no sure about that. Mass here, mass we Roddy was actually saying, see this? When it was with him and it cut out, he heard this clicking like mad, rapidly clicking. So, see when you hear it like that, it's like a bad air. But I'm trying to find where this camshaft position sensor is. So, <laughs> I put my camera off and it just cut out. That's unbelievable. No, where is that noise coming from? It's not there. It's something else. Is it there? I don't. There's a noise coming from down the bottom there. But obviously when the car cut out, the scan tool cut out, so. 
Look at this. So this is making a vibration noise. Go and disconnect it, my man. Two wires in there. Sounds like a. Aye. Aye. Oh, here, they've got a filter in there. Aye. Is that a bit homemade? So it is that. So he's vibrating when the thing cuts out. Sorry, else is vibrating. He's still going? Aye. Oh, it's drawing here, eh? It's drawing here. And when you went like that, that was a vacuum. Go and pull the vacuum tubes off, Rory. That's it. So it's drawing the vacuum up there. Hmm. Interesting. That's what you see when you don't know what's going on. You just see interesting. <laughs> right. We'll clear the codes and do that. Right? So there's the codes, with us disconnecting that purge valve, Fritz got actually shown it as a P0403 EGR solenoid circuit open circuit. Maybe it is. No, would it? Oh, it could be. Oh, oh, that could control the EGR either. Maybe, I'm maybe over-analyzing things here. So anyway, we're going to clear the codes. Erase codes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Read codes. Uh, so that's just showed it as a, a P four zeros that means it's just been cleared, I think so. So let's just start it up. Just set it back to 40,000. You want to wiggle that fuel pressure sensor, Roddy? Huh? Want to wiggle that fuel pressure sensor? Yeah, I need difference, my man.
No doing it new anyway, is it? Complain about fuel pressure. So it's been sitting here idling for ten minutes and it's never cut out yet, which is always a worry because uh, it's cut out before. So anyway, I went into the back of the, the fuel pressure sensor. It's a middle pin, and that's the signal wire. And you can see there, we are reading 1.14 volts. So I've just got this in the graphing multimeter, so we should catch it if it goes high. And you can see that we're connected to the battery negative. Bernie Thompson says we should always connect the battery negative. So if it's good enough for him, it's certainly good enough for Sandy Boy. So anyway, we'll keep what if anything happens I'll switch the camera back on. So a couple of things to note. We were sitting here at idle and the pressure started to rise. It, it always stays at 1.1314. But I'll show you the trace. It went up to 1.3 just sitting at idle and then the thing cut out. It's restarted immediately. But here's a funny thing, the only code that's came back is a P0340. Now, when it cut out originally, that code was not generated, but it's when we were driving back down the road, it gave a little stumble, and it generated this code. Cam position sensor circuit. Whatever that word is here. Uh, code temperature. So there's a fuel pressure at rest. There'll be no pressure in the rail, so we're at 0 0.514. So Roddy will go and start it. You'll see this shoot up. I think it's got to get to 0 0.8 before it'll start. There you go. So we're idling, we're back to idling at 1.14. We've seen it was at 1.12, so let's take it a run, see what codes are generated again, but we're maybe going to change direction, look at the camshaft sensor. So we're currently broke down in the middle of a field. No, in the middle of a field. <laughs> nice view, actually. So the code that keeps coming back is the P0340 camshaft position sensor. So we're monitoring data sync signal initialised. Uh, we're also looking at our fuel pressure. So Roddy's going to try and start it. So we'll see if... So we've got enough pressure. And we're getting sync signal still initialised. Engine RPM zero. You got nothing on the dash either, Roddy? Nothing on the dash. Crank it here, my man. Yeah. So, I believe at this point their camshaft sensor has failed. <laughs> How we got to get him? A bus. <laughs> <laughs> a bus. Uh, there's no many buses on this route. Maybe right, towers. Right, so there we go. Engine RPM zero. So we're going after. It's amazing how you have to change direction very quickly. Uh, so it's camshaft position sensor. Right, we'll just need to wait till it comes back. In fact, we're going to try and find it first.